It's been a little over a week since Mazda announced all this new crossover information. And I think in my excitement, I never quite broke down all five crossovers that Mazda is introducing globally. And I know that all these CX names can get pretty confusing. So uh, let's spend a couple of minutes and cover each new crossover and how it will relate to you. It was October 7th when uh, Mazda announced all this big crossover news, which was uh, just a week and a couple of days ago, but it seems like it's been a month or at least a two week, full weeks. Uh, but let's get started at the bottom of the list. It's, and when I'm saying the bottom, it's the lowest number. So the CX-50, of course, what we know about this vehicle is that it is produced for North America and it's made in Alabama, and this is on the existing small uh, product group that the Mazda 3 and CX-30 is on. And so we'll see some comparisons uh, probably on the interior uh, as far as some of the uh, same designs that carry over from the Mazda 3 and CX-30 but this will only be in North America as of now, uh, just to save on importing, exporting, all that stuff. But also, we love our crossovers here in America. So the new CX-50 is coming to America, and it will be assembled in America. Moving up next is the CX-60. Now, the CX-60 is the very first crossover on the large product group that we've been hearing about for years. So the CX-60 takes the thunder and all the uh, shock and awe for being that first large product platform vehicle. And uh, this one will be uh, what they consider a narrow body. I've got my notes here. A narrow body and of course, Mazda's idea is to offer this new platform all over the world to suit each individual's uh, country's needs. So the narrow body CX-60 will be a two row vehicle and narrow body, uh, as far as width is concerned, will be in those markets such as Japan that have a uh, road uh, restrictions and smaller parking areas uh, that will be taxed or not allowed for wider or bigger vehicles. So this will be the uh, uh, small, large, or the narrow body vehicle on the new large platform, but it'll only be two rows. So five passengers in most cases. The CX-60, uh, as far as powertrains, will also or depend on where it will be assembled and shipped, but it will include, uh, in most cases, the inline six with mild hybrid or uh, four cylinders with mild hybrid, really just depending on where it's going. So you will see uh, perhaps diesel, petro, petrol, petro, petrol, gas, and uh, electrification through a mild hybrid system. And you may also see some plug-in hybrid uh, variants as well. So it really, again, just depends on where it's going, but it will be designed for a two row option in those uh, more restricted countries. Moving up to the next crossover is the CX-70. Now the CX-70 is going to be a wide body on the large uh, platform, which people here in North America like those wide bodies, extra room, shoulder room, hip room. So we're gonna get this vehicle, and of course, as it will be released after the CX-90, which will be the first, the last on this list, but the first to make it to uh, America. Uh, so the CX-70 will be our two row version of this large platform, a little bit bigger, and will, because in North America we like our performance and our power, we're gonna have turbocharged inline sixes. 
How about that? And some plug-in hybrid uh, opportunities uh, through those inline sixes. So it will be uh, pretty interesting to see the uh, follow-up or the uh, actual ratings when these powertrains and engines are released in the upcoming months. Uh, as we move on up, the CX-80 will be the narrow body large platform with three rows. So just like now that CX-80 is seen in Japan and Australia, uh, things like that, it will be seen in those same markets. We'll continue to have uh, the same or similar powertrains uh, for those dependent on those markets. So you may see uh, more um, diesel applications in some of those markets. And in fact, uh, diesel is so popular in Japan, you may actually see, as Mazda's reported, inline six diesels with mild hybrids in Japan and nowhere else. So a little bit more uh, zoom zoom power in the CX-80 in Japan than in Australia or other markets. However, this will be that narrow body, but three rows. And I'm hoping because of the large uh, platform, it may not be seen on these uh, narrow bodies, but I would love to see an eight passenger, which may in fact be in the CX-90. Speaking of which, let's jump into that CX-90. So the CX-90 is going to be the first large platform uh, wide body, and it'd be the first one here in America. Um, the CX-60 will actually be the first large platform in other places across the globe. But in America, about a year from now, or hopefully a year from now, we'll already have the CX-90, which of course is replacing the CX-9. So uh, it'll be our three-row uh, crossover, and hopefully because it is that wider body, that larger platform, that it will be an eight-passenger uh, or max eight passengers. So seven if you have captain's chairs. So three in that third row seat, which will be fantastic and also be very competitive for its segment. So I'm hoping for that in the CX-90. This one, of course, in North America and, and similar markets will continue with the CX-70 as far as the uh, turbocharged inline six and some electrification uh, offerings uh, as well as plug-in hybrids uh, will probably be that electrification offering uh, when needed for even internal markets here in the uh, United States. Uh, just to summarize these again, the CX-50 is going to be on the small product group made in Alabama for North America, will fall just a little bit above the CX-5. And because it is uh, a small product group, I may not have mentioned this earlier, but it will have the 2.5 liter uh, with turbocharged and possibly a um, plug-in hybrid in the future, uh, but will be a the Skyactiv G 2.5 and the 2.5 turbo. Moving up to the CX-60, the first large platform will be available first uh, as that first large platform, the narrow body, and will have most likely uh, inline four cylinders, of course, with um, some electrification, some diesel. And then moving next to the CX-70 will come, uh, from what I understand, in 2022, probably as a 23 model, with the CX-90 as a 23 model, I'm guessing. And uh, it will have, the CX-70 will have uh, inline six, of course, these are rear-wheel drive, but in America and Canada, they're going to be all-wheel drive, but rear-wheel drive based. Um, and that will be your inline six with uh, potential, uh, well, with turbocharging, but also potential uh, plug-in hybrid in the future. Then the CX-80 will be that narrow-body, three-row seat vehicle uh, for other parts of the world. And it will, uh, in Japan, probably offer inline six uh, with um, diesel. And actually, I believe it'll be a turbo, nope, straight six diesel 
with the 48 volt mild hybrid system in Japan. Everywhere else will probably see it as a four cylinder uh, diesel and um, petrol, but or Sky Active X uh, probably, but still uh, three rows, narrow body, larger cargo, I believe, and I'm hoping for. The CX90 finishes it up with the uh, North American market, and this will be three row, of course, uh, rear wheel drive, but all wheel drive in America and Canada, and we'll have the turbocharged, probably a three liter inline six available. So hopefully this isn't as confusing as it may have been uh, at the beginning of this video. But uh, that's a breakdown of the five new crossovers that Mazda is introducing over the next couple of years. And of course, that all begins for us here in America with production January of 22 in Alabama of the CX-50. And then probably late summer, early fall, production and availability of the CX-90. So I'll be here on the boulevard with my ear to the ground of all this Mazda information. I've been checking my notes here and uh, I hope to see you on the road sometime in your Mazda or maybe one of these beautiful new CX-50, 70, 90 coming our way. So I'll see you on the next one.